Continuing here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee with the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thank you so very much for beginning your new year with us. And because it is a new year, so many people are saying, well, I've abused myself, I've abused my body basically since Thanksgiving with cookies and cakes and sweets and treats and high fat food. And maybe, maybe it's been even longer than just Thanksgiving. Maybe you're ready to make a serious change after years and years and years, and you've stumbled across the idea of eating a plant-based diet. Now, how can a plant-based diet help you achieve new health? Well, we're going to talk about that. Specifically, we are going to be talking about the first 28 days of eating a plant-based diet. And to break it all down for us is Dr. Alan Desmond. He is a gastroenterologist from across the pond and now the author for the first time, a great new book called A Plant-Based Diet Revolution. Dr. Alan Desmond, welcome back to the exam room. Thanks for having me back, Chuck. Really nice to spend time with you again. Thanks for having me. Good to join you, man. The pleasure is all mine, my friend. Congratulations on this book. Let's just go ahead and dive right in. The subtitle of the book is 28 Days to a Happier Gut. There it is, a happier gut and a healthier you. So a lot of people think, man, why even bother to make a change? I can't do anything in a month. But 28 days, four weeks, how much can happen? Oh, a ton. I mean, the, the reason I've written the book, I mean, Chuck, we've talked before um, about how important giving people evidence-based dietary advice is to my clinical practice. And um, I've seen my patients really optimize their results, revolutionize their health, and get the best possible outcomes from their medical treatment by making healthier changes. And people hear about this all the time, thanks to you and Dr. Bernard, um, and other doctors, I guess doctors like me, talking about this stuff and spreading the good word. But they've also hear from, heard from celebrities like maybe like Lewis Hamilton or Tora Washington or David Beckham, the footballer, talking about why a healthy whole food plant-based diet can bring you so many health benefits. And a lot of our focus is on the long-term health benefits. And my book certainly breaks that all down. Um, in a digestible way, but also in a very detailed way. But I thought tonight it would be interesting to talk about those first 28 days because sometimes people don't realize that you can really kickstart a lot of healthy changes in your body in just those first 28 days. The research tells us that you can, during those first 28 days of eating a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet, you can kickstart healthy weight loss, you can lower your cholesterol significantly, you can improve diabetic control, reduce intestinal inflammation, even generate beneficial shifts within your gut microbiome and reduce your risk of gastrointestinal cancer. Now, throughout my book, I give, I mean, the book is over like 300 scientific references, but for tonight's conversation, I thought I would just choose six studies that I mentioned in the book that give us an idea of what we can do in 28 days. So the first study, Chuck, I'm going to give you was published by Dr. Hans Deal way back in 1998 when I was still in medical school. So Dr. Deal was, had been um, an instructor at Nathan Pritikin's Institute um, where individuals would become and be hospitalized and learn about the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet. Of course, famously, Dr. Michael Greger's grandmother was a patient at the Pritikin Institute. Dr. Deal decided to find out if he could get the same benefits by going out into the community and having a community-based program that would teach individuals to eat what he described as the optimal diet. And guess what the optimal diet was, Chuck? Can you guess? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say a plant-based diet. A whole food plant-based diet. So he got 300 residents from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and 70% of them were overweight, one third already had heart disease, and one half had hypertension, high blood pressure. So these people needed, uh, they needed their own plant-based diet revolution. So he got them to eat the optimal diet, beans, greens, fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. And in just 28 days, um, without any portion control or calorie counting, they dropped an average of six pounds in body weight. And we had people moving from obese into overweight and people moving from overweight into healthy body weight in just four weeks. And those are big milestones for individuals to cross. 
for uh, Dr. Deal's volunteers way back in 1998, they also recorded significant drops in blood pressure and significant drops in cholesterol in just 28 days. And in fact, the results were so good, Chuck, as you may know, that Dr. Deal went on to found the uh, Complete Health Improvement Program. And since then, uh, he and his colleagues have helped tens of thousands of people to make the change to the whole food plant-based diet and improve their health. And they've published over 40 research papers showing just how effective it is. That's study number one, just 28 days. And and I'll tell you, one of the key things just uh, to me as a former overweight guy, the fact that you said that these volunteers, these participants did not have to count calories any longer. I would go out, I would go so far as to say that the majority of them had tried to diet previously and all of those diets included counting calories, counting points, watching your fat intake. And that is so tiresome. It, it just taxes you mentally to the point where it breaks you and it makes the diet unsustainable. And so that's when you yo-yo diet and you put that weight back on. So the fact that the matter is with these this group of individuals on that whole food plant-based diet, they didn't have to do it right then and there. I can tell you as a former overweight guy, that sets them up for success. Exactly. That's so important. And that's one of the beauties of a whole food plant-based diet. Um, so for example, if you're looking to improve your cholesterol and you're taking a different route, your GP, your doctor may have you only consuming white meat and only having one chicken breast per day because it's supposedly lower in cholesterol. Now, number one, we know that, that approach doesn't work. But number two, you're, you're having to measure everything because you don't want too much of that bad stuff. Whereas on whole food plant-based diets, you know, everything you're eating, everything on your plate is beneficial to your body. So that sort of portion control becomes a thing of the past. Let's, right, well, uh, yeah. sorry, go ahead, Chuck. Sorry, <laughs> no, I, I'm just trying to steer the show, man, and you're doing a good job too. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about that second study, number two of six. Well, actually, this is just um, evidence drawn from my own personal experience because it was very much inspired by Dr. Deal's work all those years ago. So we talked about this before, Chuck. Um, earlier this year, at the very start of 2020, before coronavirus, when we were all still feeling optimistic and happy to be in a new decade, um, my friends, um, local GPs, myself, Stephen and David Flynn, plant-based chefs, recruited 150 healthcare professionals, half of whom were doctor, doctors themselves, but almost every one of them was eating a standard Western diet, a kind of standard British diet with meat and dairy and eggs and cream. They all pretty much considered them healthy, but I promised them with just 28 days of eating a whole food plant-based diet without portion control or calorie counting, that they would experience significant health benefits. And 28 days later, just in those four, first four weeks of eating a plant-based diet, we saw pretty impressive benefits. The individuals, the healthcare professionals who were hypertensive, so at a high blood pressure, dropped their systolic by an average of 14 millimeters of mercury. Now, anyone who's been prescribed blood pressure pills knows that to drop your systolic by that amount, you need maybe one or two new pills each day. We did it without pills, Chuck, a drop of 13 mil or 14 millimeters of mercury. Among the individuals who had a high harmful cholesterol, that's the non-HDL, the atherogenic cholesterol, the one that uh, clogs up your arteries and causes heart disease and stroke. In just 28 days, we saw an average reduction of 26.5%. So we had, at the start of that study, um, we had about 70, we had about, I think about 35 to 40% of individuals had a raised or significantly raised harmful cholesterol. By the end of just 28 days, almost everybody in the group had gotten that number into the healthy range. The, there was two people who didn't, and they were just above the healthy range. And in fact, one of those individuals was a lady with a, with a condition called familial hypercholesterolemia. And she had been told there was nothing she could do about her genetics, that she was going to have a very high cholesterol level for her entire life. She was a woman in her 50s. Um, so she'd been living with that advice for decades. And after just 28 days on a whole food plant-based diet, she had almost gotten that number into the healthy range. Alongside that, in 28 days, we saw an average weight loss of 3.2 kilos 
maximum weight loss, 9.5 kilos. So again, we had people in just 28 days, people who'd been living with obesity for decades, suddenly finding themselves far closer to a healthier, healthier body weight. I'm curious, because these were healthcare professionals, uh, what were their hypotheses before this adventure began? Were they skeptical of what it was you were telling them? Or did they think, oh my goodness, we're really about to change some stuff here? I got to say, many of them were quite skeptical. Um, but I'd been given a really um, good opportunity. I'd been invited to speak at two medical conferences that happened very quickly in a row um, just a few weeks before Christmas last year. And I was basically given an hour and a half, Chuck, to speak to groups of senior family physicians. And I was given an hour and a half on both occasions. And I gave them a guided tour of all the evidence that we see, that you and I are so familiar at looking at and hearing about. Dr. Bernard's papers, the Eat Lancet report, um, the Broad study from New Zealand, all of this weight of evidence that shows us how beneficial a whole food plant-based diet can be, but which they'd just never seen before. So when you talk to family physicians about dropping blood pressure, reversing hypertension, helping people to lose weight and reverse their type two diabetes, and they've never heard about this stuff before, their jaws are on the floor. And because they'd never heard about it before, they were skeptical. But having experienced the benefits for themselves, I'm delighted to report that suddenly they, most of them, got tremendously enthusiastic. And even now, in the midst of this pandemic, when it's become even more important to address these issues, perhaps technically a little bit more difficult, um, we still have patients, we have patients now who are going through the same program. That's outstanding. I love I love the fact that uh, the results continue on into this day and now are being uh, implemented with their patients. You know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Uh, let's uh, keep moving along. So we've got six studies. We've talked about two. What's the third, my friend? Well, you know, I love a microbiome study, Chuck. It's my thing. <laughs> Who you know? doesn't love a good microbiome who, study? Who doesn't love a, gut, a good gut microbiome uh, study, particularly me? Um, in fact, the gut microbial benefits of a healthy approach to food and how that affects our body in its totality is like a thread that runs through the entire book, including the recipes. When we've got 80 beautiful, fully illustrated plant-based recipes in there. But let's talk a little bit about the gut microbiome now. You may be familiar, Chuck. Your listeners may be familiar with the term metabolic syndrome. Now, metabolic syndrome refers to three conditions, obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. These three conditions occur together so frequently that doctors call them the metabolic syndrome, as if there's something wrong with the individual, as if they've got some kind of genetic problem. So they have this syndrome. It, it, it makes it sound inevitable, right? It makes it, feel, it makes it sound like the person was born with a problem and, and the obesity, high blood pressure and high cholesterol is just that problem expressing itself. But we know that that is just not true. In fact, the so-called metabolic syndrome is driven by the standard American diet, the standard Western diet. And the evidence showing that is clear. So in 2013, um, a group of researchers in South Korea decided to find out if the opposite was true if the standard Western, standard American diet drives metabolic syndrome, could you reverse metabolic syndrome by putting individuals on a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet? So they got a group of volunteers with obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, and they made the switch from a standard Western diet to a whole food, plant-based diet. These people were consuming about 42 grams of fiber per day. They were getting three quarters of their calories from healthy whole carbohydrates. Again, no portion control, no calorie counting. And what they noticed during the, those first 28 days was that these individuals lost an average of 10% body weight, which is a significant amount of weight to lose. They noted marked improvement in their blood sugar control and their cholesterol. They're getting 70% of the calories from carbohydrates, healthy whole carbohydrates, and they're eating a cholesterol-free diet. So they get improvements in their blood sugars and their cholesterol. But even in those first 28 days, they recorded changes in their volunteers' gut microbiomes 
that helped to explain these benefits. Levels of the bacteria we call firmicute bacteria, which are associated with obesity, decreased, while levels of bacteroides species associated with healthy body weight increased. And what, what they did in this study, which is also really interesting, was they measured baseline levels of gut inflammation, fecal markers of inflammatory reactions in the lining of the gut. And in those first 28 days, Again, the baseline levels of inflammation within the gut that these individuals had on a standard Western diet came right down. So what these researchers had shown that not only are whole food plant-based uh, menu items delicious and tasty and filling, they can also help us to reverse the, all aspects of the metabolic syndrome while simultaneously improving our gut microbiome and reducing baseline levels of gut inflammation. So that's, I mean, that's a lot, 28 days, right? <laughs> yeah, and and I'm still hung up on the fact that 10% of their body mass lost in those 28 days. Everybody wants to know how quickly will the weight come off? Well, there you go. That is no small amount right there. 10%, that's enormous. Yes, absolutely. And for someone who's living with obesity or overweight, that that can make a real difference. And again, that's just those first 28 days. So it's it's pretty remarkable science, right? I love that, man. Let's get some more remarkable science. What's the fourth study you've got for us? Well, the fourth study is another 28-day study because this is our theme. <laughs> but this is a 28-day study that did something really, really interesting. So a group of researchers were really interested in 2019 in looking at the effect of different diets on the human gut microbiome. And they were specifically interested in T-M-A-O. So when we eat meat, which contains carnitine, and eggs, which contain choline, um, our gut microbiome metabolizes these into a substance called T-M-A. T-M-A enters our bloodstream, our liver turns it into T-M-A-O, and that's a pro-atherogenic, pro-inflammatory molecule that is known to promote atherosclerosis and heart disease and kidney disease. So T-M-A-O, you want to have low levels in your body. You don't want the gut microbiome that makes a lot of T-M-A-O. So they chose three popular weight loss diets. They chose the high fat Atkins diet. So as you know, there's like lots of meat and eggs, uh, very fru few fruits and vegetables. People are eating like, you know, steak and eggs for breakfast. They're having bacon wrapped up in more bacon for their dinner. So that's the Atkins plan, right? We know what that looks like. The second diet that they took was the high protein South Beach diet, which is kind of like lean meats and fruits and veg and leafy greens, but cuts down on the starchy carbohydrates. And then the third popular diet that they chose was gladly a whole food plant-based diet. So 26 volunteers, three different dietary approaches and 28 days. Now, importantly, um, every single volunteer in this study, Chuck, did 28 days on every single one of those three different, those three different diets. And during the 28 days, they monitored their calories and body weight. So they tweaked it every single day to try and prevent weight loss because they just wanted to look at the gut microbiome. And guess what? T-M-A-O. On the Atkins diet and the South Beach diet, the patients recorded rapid and significant boosts, boosts in T-M-A-O. AO production. Just one more reason why these diets increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. And guess what? On a whole food plant-based diet, TMAO levels dropped rapidly. So in just 28 days, these volunteers had harnessed the power of their gut microbiome to help protect them from, from one of our most common diseases, cardiovascular disease, which kills 80 million people per year. Um, so again, a really fascinating study, just 28 days. Yeah, and it's it's really great when you get those head-to-head -head comparisons of the various diets so you can really weigh the pros and cons for yourself, especially when they're these big popular diets like you were just talking about, like the Atkins diet. Everybody knows the Atkins diet, and so many people believe that that is the way to a healthier future. But the fact of the matter is you may see short-term weight loss, but is that setting you up for health down the line? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I would say it's setting you up for heartache, no pun intended. Absolutely, I agree. Um, in the in the in the book, Chuck, we talk about um, within the plant based diet revolution. We talk about the importance of food. We talk about 
healthy gut, healthy heart, healthy body, but also healthy mind and the beneficial effects that eating more plants can have on your mental health. So I thought today, well, during this conversation, I should get some data about those first 28 days. And I mean, we know that eating a whole food plant-based diet can benefit your mood and affect. Dr. Bernard and his team showed this back in 2007, as you may recall, when they went into an auto insurance company and they educated the employees on eating a whole food plant-based diet with bean burritos and all that other good stuff. And after, I think that was a 12 week study, um, the uh, employees who took part in Dr. Bernard's program were happier and the company was happy too because their happier employees were uh, more productive employees. So everyone was smiling. But can you improve your happiness by eating more plants in um, 28 days? The science is emerging on this. I will tell you that in 2019, a group of Austrian researchers took a group of volunteers and rather than changing what they ate, they gave them these very uh, powerful probiotic mixes of gut-friendly bacteria. The same bacteria that you get in your microbiome when you eat lots of fiber and eat lots of plants. And in just four weeks, they were able to demonstrate that on an MRI scan, the volunteers' brain activity changed on MRI scan just by you know adding new um, gut-friendly microbes to their tummy. Now, in order to really convince you that a plant-based diet can improve your mood and generate what I call the happiness effect that we see all the time when people adopt a plant-based diet, I'm going to have to extend the criteria to 12 weeks. Is that okay? It's Yeah, man. You know what? It's all good. 12 weeks, 28 days. The bottom line is it's still a pretty short time frame. Okay, let's go 12 weeks then. So in 2017, Australian psychiatrists, aware of all the studies showing that people who eat more plants tend to have better mental health, and even showing improvements in individuals when they adopt a plant-based diet or a plant-predominant diet, they recruited 67 adults who had a serious condition. These were individuals who'd been diagnosed with clinical depression. They randomized the group to either have intensive social support or to go on a healthy eating course. So it was 12 weeks of a healthy whole food Mediterranean diet, emphasizing whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and legumes. Now, after 12 weeks, Chuck, among the individuals who had the social support, 8% had gained remission from their clinical depression. Among the people who had the healthy eating course, 32%, almost one third had achieved remission from the clinical depression. So those psychiatrists um, published a paper in the peer-reviewed literature saying, if you have someone who's suffering from depression, please look at the healthfulness of their diet. Please get them to eat more fruits and vegetables and whole grains and nuts and seeds because it will help them to recover. Did they look at what it was about that? I mean, was it 100% the microbiome or was it the fact that they're losing weight and they're feeling better about themselves overall? And that may also be lifting some of the depressive fog that had been following them around. You know, that's a really good question, Chuck. And the evidence is just emerging on this. And those mechanisms are difficult to elucidate right now in detail. We know that our brain is intimately connected with our gut through the gut-brain axis. We know that our microbes uh, interact with our brain. I just told you about this study um, a few minutes ago. We're just getting people to consume, you know, to change their gut microbiome, change their neurological activity on MRI, but you're right, maybe losing weight, controlling your blood pressure, reducing your risk of numerous cancers, and reducing your personal carbon footprint just makes you feel happier. But there's also a few other mechanisms which may be involved. Um, when you get rid of the animal products, you're, get, you're reducing your intake of things like advanced glycation end products and arachidonic acid. So these are two substances that have been linked to chronic depression and inflammation within your body. And you're also taking in a lot of antioxidants, which may be helpful. Also, interesting, interestingly, Chuck, we've talked before about short chain fatty acids, uh, butyrate, acetate, propionate. These are substances that are made by your gut microbiome when you consume a lot of plants. There's been studies done recently showing that these short chain fatty acids, which we know get absorbed from the gut and enter the bloodstream, 
are also detectable in our cerebrospinal fluid. That's the liquid that bathes our brain and spinal cord. So we don't know what those short chain fatty acids are doing in there yet, but isn't it fascinating that this product that is made by our gut microbes when we eat plants is in our brain and in our spinal fluid and it's doing something. And given that these are the same substances that help our body to maintain a healthy body weight, control our blood sugars and reduce systemic inflammation, we can only surmise that it is also helping with our neurological health as well as our physical health. But that study, those studies are in their infancy, Chuck. So those mechanisms remain to be described. Yeah, the younger me would never say that, but I will say this loud and proud now. Science is awesome. I love learning about this. It is just fascinating. Um, let's see here. By my count, I believe we've tackled five of the six studies. Is that where we are? Do we still have one to go? Yeah, let's do one more. So we talked before about colorectal cancer risk, a really, really important issue and something I'll be speaking um, about at ICNM 2021. Um, so colorectal cancer risk. We know that choosing a diet built from a rich variety of plants offers significant protection against colorectal cancer and also against other cancers like uh, breast, stomach, pancreas, and a few others. Now, when we talk about colorectal cancer, this is a condition which, you know, here in the UK where I live and work, um, 42,000 people every year are diagnosed with colorectal cancer. It's also extremely common cancer in the US. In the US, Chuck, one in 15, one in 15 African-American adults uh, may be affected by colorectal cancer during their lifetime. Whereas we know from um, good epidemiological data that the same condition, colorectal cancer, is almost unheard of among populations living in rural South Africa and eating a traditional high fiber plant predominant rural South African diet. And on a previous episode, when we talked about colorectal cancer risk, we talked about this study, I'm sure you'll remember that where these um, researchers in Pittsburgh took a group of rural South Africans and a group of African Americans and they looked at their colorectal cancer risk in great detail Everyone had their microbiome analyzed. Everyone had a colonoscopy. Half of the Americans already had precancerous polyps in their bowel. None of the African, excuse me, none of the Africans had precancerous polyps growing in their bowel. And the Americans had a high colorectal cancer risk profile with low production of short chain fatty acids an increase in a thing we call the mucosal proliferation rate. And they had a lot of what we call secondary bile acids within their microbiome. All of these things are risk factors for colorectal cancer. In just 14 days of switching from standard American diet with bacon and roast beef and mashed potatoes and corned beef hash browns and all that stuff, in just two weeks of switching to a high fiber traditional South African diet, those, uh, those Americans reduced their risk profile dramatically. In fact, after 14 days, their risk profile was as low as the rural Africans. So there you go. You can reduce your colorectal cancer risk profile in just 14 days. You don't even have to wait till day 28. Just amazing. Just amazing. And I had forgotten that we had spoken about that study. And I remember being blown away then just two weeks. Yeah, how much can change there? It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Just, I, I, I believe that paper is called Fiber, Fat and Colorectal, Can Colorectal Cancer Risk. Um, if anyone wants to Google that up, it, it makes fascinating reading. We're going to do our best. We'll find that and we'll put that in the episode notes. We'll make that a one-click uh, link there for you. It'll make it real easy. Speaking with Dr. Alan Desmond, gastroenterologist and author of A Plant-Based Diet Revolution, 28 Days to a Happier Gut and a Healthier You. Dr. Desmond, do you still have time for a couple of questions? Oh, yeah. This is the good. This is the best bit. Questions, please. Let's open the mailbag. <laughs> the best bit. Uh, let's start with the fun one. It comes to us from Julie. She says, is it true? that changing your gut microbiome can also cause your taste buds to change. Oh, this is interesting. So this is kind of like the gut brain stuff that we talked about earlier, Chuck. Um, so can changing your gut microbes change our mind, change our behavior, change the foods that we consume? The real answer to this question is maybe we don't know yet. There's, I spoke earlier about how the gut microbes may influence our brain activity. We haven't seen any human studies proving 
that changing our food changes the food we like to eat directly by influencing our gut microbiome, which changes our behavior. There's been some animal studies done that have addressed this, but I'm waiting for the human studies, Chuck. And when I see those human studies, I will be posting them on Instagram. Don't you worry. <laughs> I look forward to it. Next question comes to us from Michelle. She wants to know what causes leaky gut and how can we avoid it? So leaky gut, so our gut lining is super important. It um, absorbs all our nutrients. It's the home of the human gut microbiome. It is exposed to everything you eat, all those foods, bacteria, uh, potential toxins, poisons, bacteria, viruses, yeasts. Our gut lining is exposed to all of this stuff. It needs to interact with it on a daily basis. It needs to absorb the nutrients. So in order to absorb these nutrients and in order to interact with the human gut microbiome, which is a really important thing that a healthy gut does, your gut needs to have a certain amount of leakiness or permeability. However, when that permeability becomes excess, when your gut becomes too permeable, when your gut develops what people call leaky gut, um, then that can become a problem. Because if your gut is leaky, then your immune system is getting overexposed to bacteria, overexposed to the gut microbiome, and overexposed to certain substances um, and toxins, etc., that can cause inflammation in your body. And we know, I mean, for example, there was a study done earlier this year where we uh, found out for the first time that among individuals with obesity, there's microbes from the gut microbiome living in their fat, living in their abdominal fat. So that's probably um, a pretty extreme example of what can happen when you have a super leaky gut. Now we see increased gut permeability in certain conditions like uh, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, colitis, that sort of thing. But we also see a little bit of excess leakiness in people who aren't known to have any of these conditions. We spoke earlier about the, um, the study where individuals reversed their metabolic syndrome. Those individuals had a raised level of gut inflammation, even though they didn't have a gut health diagnosis. So two things we can do to help our gut to not be so leaky. Number one is get rid of the processed food. Get rid of the junk food, Chuck, because things like emulsifiers, maltodextrin, carboxymethylcellulose, polysorbate 80, these chemicals, emulsifiers, and preservatives that are put in junk food have no business in the human gut microbiome, and they have adverse effects. They have two nasty effects. They increase the growth of potentially harmful bacteria, and they help those bacteria to adhere onto the lining of the gut and make the gut more permeable. So get rid of the junk. And then number two, reducing the animal products, things like heme iron, the carnitine and choline that promote the production of pro-inflammatory TMA, and also those high fat foods that generate the production of bacteria, that produce secondary bile acids, which promote inflammation and even cancer in the lining of the gut are also doing your gut leakiness no favor. So get rid of the processed foods, cut down on the fats and cut down on the animal products. All right, one final question. Here's a question from Rebecca. And it's an interesting one because you were just talking about cutting down on fats. Well, nuts are naturally high in fat. I wouldn't necessarily put them in the junk food category. So she's wondering, can eating nuts create a healthy microbiome? Well, you know, nuts don't just contain fat. And when we talk about um, these foods, any food, it's really useful rather than just considering individual components like how much fat, how much protein, et cetera, just to think about the whole food. So if you're eating a few handfuls of nuts each day, not only are you getting, uh, you're getting some saturated fats, you're mostly getting healthy, unsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. So that's a good thing, but you're also getting those fats wrapped up in phytonutrients and antioxidants and fiber and all this other good stuff that we get from plants that helps to keep your gut healthy. But yes, if you eat a very high fat plant-based diet, there is a risk that you could mimic some of the adverse effects that we see from a high fat animal-based diet. Now, those studies need to be done, Chuck. I haven't seen that evidence yet, but I guess in theory, if you're eating a very high fat plant-based diet, you might, for example, um, start to feed the bacteria that produce secondary bile acids, which are carcinogenic. So potentially, yes, but we haven't seen the studies yet. 
But, uh, but, but, that, but that's not a reason to avoid eating some nuts each day. They're, they're a healthy food. They promote satiety. They can help weight loss. They're a really good food. So I have like maybe a couple of teaspoons of nut butter most days, you know, with my breakfast or whatever. It's, um, they're, they're not something to be avoided if you're having just a little bit each day. There you go. The book, A Plant-Based Diet Revolution, 28 Days to a Happier Gut and a Healthier You. And Dr. Desmond, as you said, you will be speaking at the 2021 edition of the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine. And you know what that means, sir. You know what that means. Okay. It means it you, me. you are obligated to come back on this show. I wouldn't have it any other way, Chuck. <laughs> You're a good man. Well, look, congratulations on the release of the book. We have dropped a link for you to pick up a copy in the episode notes. And Dr. Desmond, I cannot wait to speak to you again, my friend. Oh, you too, Chuck. It's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure.